Everybody ready? Good, then let's get going. Really, really warm welcome back. Well, a few months ago, I put out a video about a toaster and kettle rack, and that rack stayed in place while I was driving, so it made setup so much easier and packed down the same. And what I failed to mention on that video was actually most of the footage was from a couple of years ago because we built the rack a couple of years ago and then I just updated it, but I hadn't embarrassingly got around to editing the footage, which is why it came out rather recently. But today's video is to bring you absolutely bang up to date uh, with what's been happening across the last couple of weeks and a couple of little updates that we've done to this rack. Uh, so I want to talk you through those and, and show you what we did and uh, show you the couple of improvements. I want to do that fairly quickly after the last video in case you were thinking of building something similar yourself because I know there are a few of you guys who own uh, Ariba Feelings following the channel now which is wonderful to have you around. So in terms of an update of how it's got on. Uh, the automotive double-sided tape, I'm pleased to say, has held this thing exactly where it got put originally, uh, despite the, the best efforts of uh, country lanes and uh, uh, sleeping policemen. No, we don't call them that these days, do we? Speed bumps and <laughs> the best of British potholes have uh, not managed to dislodge that this thing so that is really really great uh, it's a couple of marks on the top so potentially it could do with a bit of a, a rub down but it's doing really well however in the couple of years of using it there are a couple of tweaks that we'd like to make now so the first of which is when it pulls out it can really do with a bit more air ventilation around the toaster because of course the toaster does get very hot and if it's on its third or fourth serving then it does get really hot excuse the black paint I've been doing the shed um, so you know it could really do with a bit more air ventilation around there which means pulling the whole drawer out slightly further especially if this kettle is hot you know it's a little bit difficult to reach in I do use these bamboo tongs because it saves people sticking knives into the toaster and shorting the electrics so you know that's not too bad but still a little bit further would be good and the cables at the back are an absolute mess because all of these cables and these normal uh, plug socket plugs feed into the uh, a, a gang plug a distributed extension lead in the back there and so there's just a mass of cables which is just a bit messy so today's improvements are all about sorting those things out so let's get into it and job number one is to rotate this socket over because of course the flex is going down which is really very awkward indeed especially if it's got one of those strain relievers on the outside so in theory this should be really simple uh, we're quite familiar with these sockets because we've installed a couple of extra ones and there'll be a video about that at some point because I don't think it's on the channel yet So these are CBE square line sockets. So as you saw, there was a, a silvery chromey faceplate that popped off. And then there's this inner black frame that comes out. And that reveals the screw holes. And you can access these entirely from the front, which is great, of course, because it's built into panels. So it should just be a case of loosening these four screws and then gently rotating the socket. Once I've checked, we've got enough slack in the cable. And then just putting the screws back in and popping the face place back on. Famous last words. Anyway, that should be it. There should be a void behind this uh, mirror mounting spot. So it's going to be really interesting to see the external wall. As a side note, actually, it was a little frustrating that this mirror was here because I wanted to put one of those extra Fiamma security lock things that drill right through the sidewall so you can lock them from the inside or the outside. 
but of course this mirror being here meant that I couldn't. So I'm fascinated to see what's behind here. Anyway, let's get on with it. So yeah, plenty of room in here. There seems to be enough play in the cables. They seem to be quite well attached. So, you know, I'm just being a little bit gentle here because I don't, I don't want to work anything loose. I just want to check they're firmly in the back there because it's very difficult to service. And yeah, there's nothing up here. It's just a plain old void. Interesting. Okay, so I just need to rotate this uh, socket plate and then get the screws back in. And then that'll be little job number one done and i can hear mike in the background with the drills and the uh, table saw and so on and i bet you he hasn't filmed any of the bit he's doing of this project so i suspect the next bit we'll see is his finished article anyway we'll get to that in a moment let's get these screws back in first Right, so let's just pop this back together. It's probably a good moment to say this stuff is pretty easy to use, but it's a lot more confusing than domestic stuff. Um, some suppliers seem to list each of the components separately. So, for example, the back plates, the front plates, the middle plates. Goodness knows how many plates there are in each of these setups. Um, and some of them seem to list them as a pack, which makes perfect sense because you need all the little bits. So if you want to order this stuff, just familiarise yourself with how it works first and which bits you need uh, for the particular type of socket that you're trying to put in. In this case, for example, what you're seeing here, so this whole installation is technically made up of something called a back plate or a mounting plate. That's the bit behind the main socket itself. Then there's the main socket, so the screws that I'm putting in now go through the socket and through the back plate into the wall. And then there's that inner frame, which is the little black one. And then there's the outer frame, which is the silvery coloured one. So technically that's four components. And if you're installing one of these main sockets into uh, somewhere that can be accessed, so somewhere that a hand might go, for example, into a a bed box or a cupboard or something, then you also need a back box with the mains sockets, which has got a, a strain reliever in and so on. Um, and I'm tempted to say the, the manufacturer should have put one in here. Um, but as it's just going back as it was, then I'm going to leave it exactly as it was. But yeah, there are these back boxes as well for these mains connectors. But you don't need back boxes if you're doing... Um, 12 volt sockets or USB sockets or so on. So anyway, a little bit more complicated than standard domestic sockets. And of course all the front bits are interchangeable so you get the single back mounting plates and the, the front covers and so on but the whether you have a 240 in there or a USB or a 12 volt or whatever is up to you. Obviously you've got to get the correct one in place. Uh, the other thing to say is they are a little bit delicate and fiddly so if you are ham-fisted they are a little bit delicate so you know get somebody with smaller fingers to do it it's just a case of gently easing your fingers around the frame and gently easing the frame out as you saw me do earlier um, so just take it a little bit easy and then it won't snap uh, but you do wonder the first few times whether it's going to but you'll be fine I'm sure Anyway, let's go and see if Mike's finished the box, and if so, then I'll be able to get some paint and some varnish onto it. Anyway, whilst I was in there flipping the socket over, Mike has built this lovely box. So just a couple of bits of 9mm birch ply around the outside, and a spare old bit of wall cladding, I think, probably from uh, my office build here. So a few scrap bits of timber and uh, some pins and a bit of glue and we have an extension so we're going to bolt this onto the back of the existing tray to make it a little bit longer and you can see that one of the sides has an extra uh, leg on it this is so that when the tray is pulled out the short side because remember it's it's diagonal across the front 
it then comes out the same distance as the longer side. So there's just a bolt through here at the moment to give me a handle to hold on to while I paint it. And I'm going to do exactly the same as I did last time. So use this wonderful Liberon uh, wood dye that I'm absolutely in love with. Uh, this stuff is ubiquitous in our house. So let's get on with uh, dyeing this. It's going to need two coats of dye because the uh, ubiquitous problem is that it's always impossible to get all the ends of the, the plywood painted the first time around. You think you've got them all, but then by the time it's dried, whatever they, the problem is, I guess the micro air bubbles um, show you that you haven't. So two coats of this stuff and then a quick spray over with some spray on varnish and then we'll bolt it all together and get it into place. Nice, easy job. Or it will be as soon as I can get this blinking lid off. <laughs> The new piece has been bolted on so this whole drawer will come out much further now and uh, we've also improved the wiring so mike's put a uh, a kettle socket in the back here in the in the new piece and then wired in the toaster and the kettle straight into that because over the past couple of years we found that we've been uh, using them together anyway so there was no point having separate wires for each so as you'll see in a moment we can just disconnect it and take the whole tray out to the awning if we want to set up um, uh, a sort of breakfast station out there if we're doing a long trip somewhere. All right, so here we are with the extension on. And as you can see, it can come all the way out to, probably even a bit further there, all the way out to there, still be perfectly stable, plenty of air space around that toaster, easy to access with your hand, or with the tongs, of course, and avoid the hot kettle. And still we have, if we want to pull the, I mean, of course it can come all the way out to there. And if we want to disengage the thing, we can easily unplug from here, or the kettle plug and pull the tray out then take it out to the awning and use it out there because all those things are built in we just put it on the surface and then we just take our bit of cable with us or and there we are now can you see so there are the cables in at the bottom and then underneath, so neatly wired in to the single kettle plug. So much better, much tidier. And just line it back up, grab the plug, plug in. Hey presto, good to go. Ready for travel. Great, so I hope you enjoyed the updates. Um, if you think you Building one of these things, it was quite a complicated build in terms of the shapes involved and, and getting everything to sit properly. 
but it's such a useful thing you know not only is there the kettle and the toaster in there that's easy access when you need it shut it away when you don't latch on in travel but i've got all this extra space over here as well so the draining board can sit up here and drain directly into the sink which is brilliant so the hob is not blocked at all because that was always a problem I had to have the the drainer on top of the hob and of course if that's hot you can't put the glass down so it just creates a bit of a pain in the neck when it comes to smooth and easy living and of course this is supposed to be a caravan holiday which is supposed to be relaxing so that is absolutely brilliant really pleased with this mod um i hope you enjoyed the updates thanks so much for your company and i guess i'll see you next time so bye for now see ya Thank <laughs> you.